Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Norville, this edition's top stories. Prime Minister the Honorable Philip J. Pierre delivers his maiden address to the UN calling for better financing terms for SIDS. Tourism Minister Honorable Dr. Ernest Hillier assures a more inclusive sector on this World Tourism Day. And the education sector benefits from programs designed to increase digital literacy. Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre in a bold address to the 76th United Nations General Assembly on Saturday, 25th September 2021, called for the abolition of the criteria used to determine access to concessional development financing by small island developing states, SIDS. St. Lucia's Prime Minister told the UN General Assembly that the indicators paint an erroneous picture of national prosperity. Mr. President, St. Lucia is calling for the adoption of a Global Vulnerability Index by international institutions. This index should include variables such as vulnerability to adverse weather systems and natural disasters, historical disadvantages arising out of plunder, colonization and exploitation, and the vagaries of the economic activities which such states depend on for survival. Such a Global Vulnerability Index will ensure that access to concessional development finance is granted based on the criteria that consider the true context of our fragile economies which are constantly on the threat of regression due to natural, man-made or political disasters. St. Lucia also calls for immediate measures to safeguard the solvency of SIDS which have disproportionately affected during the pandemic. These measures must include debt restructuring and write-offs, support to strengthen health systems, more equitable distribution and access to vaccines, and assistance for recovery that meets the demands of the developmental model adopted in the beneficiary country. Honorable Pierre urged the international community to adopt common approaches to managing COVID-19 in order to ensure economic sustainability. We call for the standardization of vaccine privileges across the global community as it relates to quarantine, isolation, and other related requirements. St. Lucia, like many other countries, is grappling with a decline in investment, trade remittances, and a growing debt burdens. There is an urgent need to accelerate global momentum towards the ambitious targets across various international agreements and developmental agendas. A common thread across these instruments is the need to address the unique and vulnerabilities and special circumstances of SIDS. St. Lucia and all SIDS continue to face huge spending needs to finance the immediate health responses that are well beyond our capacities. Such a shift in focus will reverse achievements in sustainable development goals, implementation, and in building climate resilience. Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre. The recovery of St. Lucia's tourism industry from the impacts of COVID-19 is showing positive signs. Minister for Tourism Honorable Dr. Ernest Hilaire says the trend has been strong as the Ministry of Tourism oversees the safe reopening of the sector. In a message commemorating World Tourism Day, Honorable Hilaire noted that the theme for this year's observance, Tourism for Inclusive Growth, is in keeping with the thrust of the government. With the reopening of the industry and further development in the COVID-19 era, we must address the distribution of wealth to all the actors within the tourism value chain to increase employment opportunities and reduce poverty. It is the efforts of my government to ensure that as part of employment opportunities, St. Lucians become owners and operators of more tourism businesses with a focus on developing strong linkages with agriculture, the youth economy and the digital age. Already many of us depend on tourism, from our travel agents to airport staff, taxi drivers, tour companies, hotel workers, vendors and artists, villa rental owners, boat operators and water sport operators, beach and market vendors, entertainers, craftspersons and duty-free shops, just to name a few. 15,000 St. Lucians are employed in the tourism industry. The tourism minister says the island can see major gains as the global prediction for the tourism industry is the return of the 62 million jobs if the vaccine uptake maintains pace 
and travel restrictions are lifted. St. Lucia has made great progress in the reopening of the industry and to date approximately 8,500 workers have been re-employed. A total of 290 vacation rental properties have been certified and experiencing higher bookings. 35 hotels have reopened their doors and reporting satisfactory occupancy rates. Over 20 car rental companies and over 1,500 taxi drivers have returned to work. The cruise sector has reopened, albeit at low volumes. Since the relaxation of travel protocols of vaccinated persons, the destination has recorded a total of 110,116 stayover arrivals to date, achieving almost 54% of pre-COVID-19 figures for the second quarter, as well as exceeding predictions by 11% for the overall targets as part of the recovery. Sustaining a responsible reopening, Honorable Dr. Ernest Hillet says, requires a national commitment by all St. Lucians to adhere to the protocols, build vaccine confidence with strong uptake, and focus on taking advantage of opportunities for growth. St. Lucia's education sector has received the timely support from a United States funded initiative that seeks to increase digital literacy and position the nation's students for opportunities in the youth economy. Here's Homer DeMarc with the details. The Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology, and Vocational Training recently launched the St. Lucia Connected Initiative. The two-year U.S. $1 million project funded by USAID is expected to bolster youth, student, and teacher empowerment through digital literacy. The launch on Friday, September 24, saw the representation of key project stakeholders, each expressing their commitment to the advancement of the education sector. Karine Rene, Acting Curriculum Officer for Media Technology at CAMDU, provided an overview of the project. The St. Lucia Connect Ed program seeks to amplify the strengths and skills of youth in St. Lucia by providing opportunities in digital education from which to learn and practice leadership and life skills from self-determined pathways. The St. Lucia Connect Ed program will work towards building resilience and improving quality of education and learning in St. Lucia by equipping St. Lucian youth and educators with digital literacy skills to transform them into digital literacy leaders in their communities. The skills to be developed will include computer skills, software skills, as well as the use of technology in everyday life. As part of the program, teachers will adopt a positive youth development approaches to teaching that place emphasis on critical life skills. Minister for Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology, and Vocational Training, Honorable Sean Edward, assured that adequate resources will be allocated to the development of the education sector. It is an imperative for every child in the school system to have a smart device. And the role of technology in education delivery is well documented and has been established. It is no longer a luxury item, but it, in, it, it is a critical instructional aid. It is a repository of information. And even in the home setting, after you have given a device to a child and the child takes that device home, more often than not, such a device is what keeps the family in St. Lucia connected to relatives, in some cases mothers and grandparents in the diaspora. U.S. Ambassador to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Her Excellency Linda Tagliella-Tella, said the United States of America is committed to improving the lives and experiences of Caribbean youth. The St. Lucia Connect Ed initiative demonstrates our continued commitment to the education sector. The partnership with the St. Lucia Ministry of Education created with the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce, the St. Lucia National Youth Council, and the United States-based Tuskegee University will greatly enhance opportunities for youth and teachers on digital literacy, as well as promote the activity's sustainability. To this end, I applaud, excuse me, I applaud representatives of the Ministry of Education for dedicating resources to support this initiative. I also commend teachers for your commitment and support, which is essential to propel youth along a path of success. The Ministry of Education in collaboration with strategic partners will provide training, digital skills, 
internships and volunteer opportunities for the holistic development of young people and empowerment of youth as leaders. From the Government Information Service, Kamadi Mack reporting. Meanwhile, the Early Childhood Services Unit is reflecting on the reopening of the sector as they continue to maintain standards and the labor fears of parents who are still skeptical to send their children to school. More from Daniel Dubois. Despite the closure of learning institutions due to the surge of COVID-19 cases, there is still one population of young learners who have been fortunate to return to the classroom amidst the pandemic. This is all due to the concerted efforts of the Early Childhood Services Unit, administrators and stakeholders. Close to the one-month marker of a successful reopening of the Early Childhood Centers island-wide, Training officer at the Early Childhood Services Unit, Ruth Philip Favrier, reflects and says that the move to open early childhood centers was a thorough collaborative process, including several governmental agencies such as the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, Environmental Health, and the Early Childhood Services Unit, working to ensure the safety of children, staff, and administrators. We had to work with the Bureau first to develop those protocols. When the protocols were established, we had to share it with our key stakeholders. So we had to have um, virtual meetings to get the input from the sector, what they felt. Prior to opening, each center had to develop and complete what we called a COVID-19 response plan, where they laid out quite clearly what the guidelines would be for their specific center in relation to the various, the, the, what I would refer to as the national protocol set by the department. After that, they were inspected by the Department of Environmental Health. And if the officers found that everything was in line to the standards, then they were granted approval. The age grouping of birth to five is a critical time in the development of children and all must be done to ensure that they remain engaged and active. Administrator of the Precious Jewels Early Childhood Development Center, Donna Segis, added that early childhood centers provide so much more than just learning. It's a space for holistic development for young ones, which includes socialization, expression, and play. This is where it all begins. The foundation is set between those ages, and I think it was very critical for them to be at the center during this time for face-to-face -face interaction, in opposed to being at home. One of the things we realized was when they came back, the behavior, it was totally different. They had forgotten the routine and the structure, and it was very difficult for the teachers to go through. They had to um, start over, basically, to get the children back into routine. Some favorable factors also came into play when it came to considering the reopening of early childhood centers this September. The numbers on site are a lot smaller, therefore spaces are a lot easier to control. Research and science shows that the transmission and mortality rate of this age grouping is extremely low. The strides have been made to create and enforce robust protocols to protect children, to allow them to be back at school. Phillips Favre also mentions that children are eager to learn and extremely responsive to the new rules. We are open now when everybody else is closed because, as I said, it's based on the protocols we have in place. And we are dealing with a cohort that is, in a sense, easier to manage. Our children aim to please. They do not try to be overly um, disruptive. They do not um, try to display attitudes of defiance. These young children always want to please their adults in their, in their setting. So as long as the practitioners model the behaviors, we feel very confident that children will also model those behaviors. And the spin-off of that is they too will remind the parents of those protocols and ensure that the parents do likewise. 131 early childhood centers are open today and continue to be one shining example of working through the pandemic and also a chance for children to be back at play. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology, and Vocational Training, I am Daniel Dubois, reporting. Stay safe, stay safe. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. According to a study published in the American Journal of Psychiatry in 2018, compared with the general population, individuals with alcohol dependence and persons who use drugs 
have a 10 to 14 times greater risk of death by suicide. Alcohol alone was found to be involved in approximately 22% of deaths by suicide. Drug use does not solve problems, it creates them. Suicide is preventable and one call can save a life. All we need to do is act. Ask if someone is thinking about suicide, let them know you care, help them find assistance or treatment as soon as possible. Call 203 if you or a loved one is having suicidal thoughts. This is a message from the Employee Assistance Program, the Ministry of Public Service. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Ta, Janel, Monsieur Madame, Department qui n'est pas pour information à gouvernement cette ici, ça c'est GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale pays à NTN, qui présente une nouvelle à Coyol, présente au Primus Hutchinson. Association pour protection des consommateurs à cette ici, très appréciable pour un morceau de législation qui le gouvernement a passé récemment en cas de concept pour cimenter la protection des consommateurs et aussi pour régler l'opération des membres business à cette ci semaine qui passe, deux anciens grecs organisateurs, ça c'est M. Hubert James, qui était président à temps passé, et officier de relations publiques, ça c'est affaires relations publiques, M. Marius Modest, qui en studio NTN pour te défricher l'opération organisation, mais principalement pour te parler à ce morceau de loi, ça là, qui est une meilleure façon et qui assiste l'opération organisation les consommateurs. Selon Modest, après 24 ans qu'a aspect pour loi ça en réalité à présent il était qu'a voulu plus participation par les consommateurs PIA même si il y a pas un membre organisation ça mais tout consommateur qu'a trouvé représentation en bas organisation ça 24 ans nous qu'a espéré pour ça so actuellement bagaille la place ça nous ni pour faire c'est pour et de ces mouna indique yo qui sa doit yo yé et puis là les a yo brisé représentation yo ka yo ka venir noter nous et ben yo ka le département côté là tout yo yo sa tapé bagay yo adressé important moi toujours ka di si ou ka gagne un bagay fait assez yo ba on ici modeste ajouter qui il nécessaire pour la discussion à ce mois sur législation ça là Côté les consommateurs, ça acide et examiné en ces meilleures façons qu'ils voient ça là, qu'à travailler à faveur. Il y a une chose qui savent, c'est une responsabilité, une responsabilité pour ça, ils fait tout. C'est pas ou qu'à aller acheter un bagage ou pas qu'à ou même pas qu'à garder. Comment ils vont là et si ou qu'à ils ont comme tu ou comment ils vont opérer. Parce qu'avec bagage à jouer. Plusieurs femmes, eh bien les cultivateur qui est engagé en secteur projet 7 d'un oui avec les gym pour produire et distribution qui participé à une autre session atelier de étonnement pour les femmes en région D et tout ça là c'était pour apprendre une manière pour occuper les gym après y'a trouvé récolté ça a fait en collaboration et puis département agricole et mission technique des pays taïwan ces femmes ça a été aussi fait connaissance et puis on s'est les nouveaux en parmi eux, c'était l'été rapide, ça c'est vert et rouge, et romaine, rouge et vert. Et tout le monde, ça c'est continuation pour les farmers qui sont engagés en projet 7 d'arrivée pour essayer de baisser à ceci quantité d'arrivée avec les gym qui sont ici qui acheter l'autre pays. Il y a un spécialiste des affaires de production. En mission technique, là, là c'est Eric Chen, fait comprendre qu'il y a un plus gros problème à production l'été, c'est la situation qui a pourri et qui a travaillé pour adresser ça. Il dit aussi chaque ces différents plan l'été a brisé traitement à pas et qui a assisté les femmes pour agir et puis euh, contre euh, changement de climat. Il y a un grand grec, un grand magasin Massy qui est responsable pour affaire d'un oui, ça c'est Donston de Mille, fait ces femmes là comprendre que la manière est très important pour récolter en bas bonnes conditions pour ça capable de vendre une bonne qualité de produit. Il dit aussi, c'est fait l'été là, qui a pourri, parce que la femme a exposé pour trois chalets. Le département agricole et la mission technique de pays Taïwan a encouragé les femmes 
et bien les cultivateurs pour servir une bonne technique pour assurer une bonne qualité, une bonne qualité pour empêcher les perdants. En même temps, le gouvernement s'est laissé en collaboration et puis le gouvernement Taïwan a continué l'effort pour limiter l'importation de fruits avec le régime à bas programme qui commençait en l'année 2007. Concept pour Paris façade sud-est castrui te chen yon ceremony pour les membres concept yo pour te sermente en bureau pour commencer opération yo. Ça te fait mercredi le 22 septembre 2021. Ce même concept là qui sermente c'était M. Mario Boyce qui chef concept là, Ambrose Adolf qui assistait Francesca Thomas, Giselle C. Fontenelle, Benedicto Frederick, Joycelyn François Daniel, Kassira Saiwak, Chateau C. Paul Oliver, Lance and Octave, Michel E. Daisy, et Tennyson D. Edmund, représentatif à Kai Parlement pour Paris Sala. On est à Joachim Henry, conseiller ces membres conseil là pour venir au courant et puis ces lois qui ont gouverné pour pouvoir assurer le conseil là et pour ne pas fixer seulement à ce à faire couper les herbes et nettoyer le canal, mais aussi pour placer bonne attention à ce gouvernement local et à faire ce peuple-là même. Et faire un appel pour que la travail et puis officier de transformation sociale pour ces communes et officier pour ce projet de jeunesse et l'autre agence pour adresser ce qui est nécessaire à ce paroisse là Le ministre de la Kine responsabilité pour faire le travail et le gouvernement local, on est Richard Frederick, conseiller pour travailler pour assister tout le monde et tirer attention à ce partisan politique. Concept là, ni pour développer un plan et pour chercher pour agence des bonnes volontés pour assister et établir divers projets. Chef concept là, Mario Boyce, promet pour faire un bon service pour ces paroisses là et pour développer un paroisses pour tous ces peuples là. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons trouvé nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant, monsieur, madame, pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie une invitation. Pour que je encore, si Dieu a fait la vie, je vous remercie de nouvelle à Koyol. Après ça, je vous remercie de vous présenter au Genel. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Novel. Messier Pill Primus. We now take a look at the weather. <laughs>